Hey Porsche fans, Daniel here and welcome to the Jeff Fuel Only channel. In this episode, we're installing the Track Nanny, the smart valve controller that closes your valves when you want it to, such as at the racetrack on a sound limited day. Now in this episode, we're not gonna talk much about it, we're just doing the install. If you haven't seen my other video where we meet Tom McGinnis, the guy that makes these, he tells us all about them in that video. You can check out a link right here in the description and at the end of this video. Otherwise, when you're ready to install it, come back to this video. Let's get started. As a quick review of what the Track Nanny does, it's going to open and close our exhaust valves at a predetermined GPS location. The star here is the pre-programmed one that you buy it from, and mine's programmed to Laguna Seca between turns five and six. There is the program section where you can set that, push the button, and you'll lock in your own GPS area, maybe in a quiet neighborhood, maybe at another track or something. And then from there, you can adjust the size of that GPS zone for your pre-programmed zone. Then there's the stock mode, so your exhaust valves will work like stock, and the loud mode. The loud mode means the valves are always open, which some of us really like to have that. However, in the 718 Cayman, I find there's a bit of drone, basically between two and 3,000 RPM, but it's definitely louder. All right, let's open the box and see what's inside. First, we've got an external GPS antenna. This is magnetic. You can use it if you want, but I use my Track Nanny without it. But if you use it, you can help guarantee your signal. Here's the fuse tap with power, the suggested method. And this is the cigarette lighter adapter that Tom suggests you just throw out. This is the wiring harness, all plug and play. And the box, of course, comes with some instructions. And I really love that Tom includes this picture with a diagram of the fuse tap because even I forget which fuse is which and which side is the 12 volt side. Now, as you know, you can't just pop the hood to get to the engine bay on your Cayman and Boxster. So there's a good portion of this install video that is removing the panels necessary to access the engine. That's probably the part that's gonna take the longest. Now, if you're used to doing that on your 981 or 718, you can go ahead and skip to this time where we get to connecting the valve controller and getting it powered up. Most of the procedure is going to be all about the Cayman. I can't tell you much about the Spider or Boxster, uh, so you'll have to check out other videos for extra details there. But otherwise, I think you're going to learn a lot in this video. So let's get started. For this installation, you're going to need the following tools. First of all, it's always great to have a full trim removal kit. I generally only use one of these as you'll see in the video. It's my go-to, but a whole kit is always handy to have. You can support the channel by buying these and other tools via the Amazon associate links in the description below. You will need a ratchet or some type of driver. I'm using the DeWalt in this case and a T30 Torx bit. There's a couple of Torx screws that are tough to get to. So I ended up using this 90 degree attachment to my DeWalt. However, I would suggest ordering a set like this. It's a low profile ratchet set that has a T30 Torx bit in it, and that will help you get into that tight spot. I can't wait to use that next time around. Before we get started, here's a quick 30 second overview. To do this, we need to remove these two carpeted panels, these two plastic trim pieces, this silver trim piece, these two plastic pieces by the shoulder harnesses, the crossbar, and then the carpet and the engine cover. We can then connect the wiring harness and then power the track nanny with the fuse tap. After that, we'll put everything back together and test it out. Now that's just an overview. Stick around for the details. All right, this job does have a lot of steps, but don't worry, just take your time. It's all pretty easy. You shouldn't have to worry about breaking any plastics or anything. Uh, sometimes a clip will separate or you'll drop one, but you can always get those at your local Porsche dealer for cheap. So let's remove these two inner panels of the rear trunk. They're right here, shaped like this, and they're meant to be pulled off because there's electronics behind them. So just grab at the top and pull it out. You'll see that there are a number of clip slots and little holes where these little cones go into. And these little cone tops come off. Sometimes they stick in the holes. Just keep track of them. And if you lose any, I'm sure you can find some more at the Porsche dealership. These little tabs go down in the base of the trunk. Let's go ahead and remove the other one now. Now, see, I dropped a cone, stuck it back on, and I'll put those aside. 
Let's remove the caps off the coolant and oil fill. And now we can remove this plastic section. I'm just gonna grab it here and pull. It should unclip. Metal clips are all that's holding it in place, plus the little cones to help align it when you put it in. Take it off carefully. You don't wanna scratch this center silver section. And uh, there it is. Let's do the other one now. Again, those cones tend to stick in there. I like to take them back out. All right, let's pull off this center section. I don't know what you wanna call this, but we'll call it the silver thing. It pops off, it actually has nine clips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine clips, but they all just kinda of seem to pop off all at once. Under there is the engine cover. We'll get the carpet in a second after we remove this part. Slide your seats forward, and we need to remove this shoulder harness plastic shroud. Just take your trim tool, tuck it up under in this area is where I found it useful, and it sort of pops out. Do the same in the rear section and pop it upward. Then once it comes off, you can just slide it down carefully behind your carbon fiber seats if you have them and set it on the floor. Do the same on the other side. Now to remove this crossbar, there's these four T30 Torx bits. I'm using a regular ratchet to break them loose real quick. This is just what I found easiest, and of course, work carefully near your carbon fiber bucket seats if you have them. Then I'm just using the bit in my hand to unscrew them, and if you dropped one, like I did, it's always handy to have a magnetic retrieval tool. All right, that's all four of them out now, and we just lift the bar straight up, and again, be careful around those seats. All right, now the plastic part can come out. Again, just some metal clips, pry up on it with your fingers, or if you need to, use a trim tool, and it comes right on out. You might find it easier to send it out the back hatch. Now we remove the carpet. It's mostly tucked under these tie down rings. That's really all it's holding it down at this point. So just pull it out from under there and set it aside. And now we have full view of the engine cover. It's held on by, you guessed it, T30 Torx screws. We're gonna remove all those screws and then we can remove the engine cover. Now most of them come out pretty quick with my DeWalt driver here, but there are two that my driver couldn't get to. So I'm using this 90 degree attachment. You can find a link in the description to something similar. Although I think I wish I had those low profile ratchets in this situation. Now that you have all of those screws out, we're just gonna lift the engine cover out. But again, be careful. This is metal, it has sharp edges. You don't wanna catch your seats, you don't wanna catch the plastic trim, and you don't wanna hit your back glass. So be real careful. And now that we can see the engine, you know why they covered it up. It's not exactly the prettiest thing. But our valve controller electronics are down here. And if you have a 981, the connector is super easy to get to. It's right here on the right rear side of the engine, on top. And even though you can't see it, I had to do some housekeeping here. I don't like dirty engines. I'm surprised how much dirt there is. The car only has 5,000 miles. First, let's look at the 718 connector, and then we'll get over to the 981 connector. So the wire connector we need to uh, separate is down here underneath that vacuum line. So yeah, it's kind of tight to get in there, even if you got small hands. You can't even see it. So we're gonna take some time to move some vacuum lines out of the way. You may find that you don't need to do this, but this is what I decided I needed to do. So first, these are kind of mounted on these metal clips and I just popped them out of there. And these two are connected with a plastic clip. So I separated those and this just gives you more wiggle room. I'm gonna tuck this one over here and out of the way and now we need to disconnect that one. Just pinch at the connector down there. You'll find some little buttons squeeze them with your fingers or press one side. They're all kind of like that, and then it just pops up. There's one back here. You just press on the top on that white section, squeeze and pull it apart at the same time. Always be careful though, if you have an older car, these vacuum lines get brittle over time. Okay, and then we'll get this one here. You see this green button? Press that and pull apart. It does take a little effort. Just push hard and pull apart. There it is tuck that out of the way. Now we're almost there. So now there's still a vacuum line covering up the connector. It's right down here, it's in a T, so we need to disconnect one more line. 
I'm gonna grab it, pinch, and separate. Here it is again, watch. Okay, now those vacuum lines are out of the way and you can see the wired connector right there. That little gray thing though, that's a lock. So look at the one that came with the kit. It's kind of similar, it's got a little gray lock. This lock snaps down to lock it in place and you pop it up so that you can actually pinch it off. So I'm gonna just use a flathead screwdriver, this is a little tedious, and pry it up gently so it clicks. There it is. Now I can reach down there the best I can and pull it out. Just pinch and pull it straight up. Now honestly, that was the hardest part of all of this. So now let's take the wiring harness from the track nanny and we need to plug it in down there. This is also sort of difficult depending on the size of your hands, but we're gonna get it done. I'm just gonna hang it down there and let gravity do the work. Just make sure it's oriented properly and then jam your finger down there or some other long instrument and click it into place and put the little gray lock down. Once you've done that, plug in the other part. This is from the track nanny. This is the female end and it's keyed and uh, find out which direction it needs to go and you can see it here. and click it together. There you go. The track nanny is connected. Now we just gotta clean up all of our work. We gotta put all these vacuum lines back together. So let's get started on that. So just look around, make sure you get them all. We did this one, so I'll reconnect that one back there. And then there's uh, this one, the vertical one. And remember down below there's a T that we did. We gotta get that one too. And it's hard to see in the camera here, but I'm reconnecting that. So that's three connections. And then uh, remember these were all sort of clipped in with these metal clips on the top of the intake manifold. And then you got this one here, you wanna reposition it and uh, put the little support clip that holds those two lines together. And then there's this long one that goes over here. Click that into place and that's it. Everything's put back together. Now I haven't had the opportunity to film this installation on a 981, but here's how it goes. It's super simple. Remember the connector is right here on the right side of the engine, right on top. You just want to disconnect that connector and then find the matching one with the cable in your kit. Plug those in together. Then take the other cable from your kit and plug it in to where the first plug was originally connected. Then maybe use a zip tie to hold the connectors in place like this and drape your cable out the right side. That's all. Now we need to set up the power for the track nanny. So we're gonna use the fuse tap. Now over here in this fuse box, there is no diagram for this. I looked very hard, not in the manual, not on the internet. I'm sure somebody has access to the maintenance manual for the car and it'd be great if you commented below and told us what it is. Now I can't honestly remember if there was originally a 15 amp fuse here, but I took it out if there was one. But I've determined that this fuse is only powered when you turn on the car. And that's what you need it to do. It's not gonna drain the battery while the car's off. And if you're a 981 owner, this is also not the fuse you're supposed to use. You need to use this one to the left of it. Here's a pic of the fuse tap installed on a 981. Make sure you plug in the fuse tap in this orientation. Also, I found it easier to get it fully seated by first removing the fuse to the left of it. And then once it was fully seated, I put that fuse back in. Just use some needle nose pliers to grip the fuses and be careful not to drop it behind the carpet, otherwise you're probably not going to find it. Now that the fuse tap is installed, we need to take this little grounding eyelet and ground it somewhere. So just split it away from the fuse tap. You see, they just come apart. Just give them a little pull and now you have a lot more wire to work with. Tuck it in behind the carpet and uh, we're gonna put it underneath this bolt head right over here. And that should be a sufficient ground. There should be a similar unpainted bolt somewhere on the 981 as well. So grab your 10 millimeter socket, pull that bolt out, put it through the eyelet and screw it down. All right, everything should be sufficiently in place that when we plug in the power to the track nanny as well as the wiring harness, we should have a working product here. So we'll turn on power to the car, just put it in accessory mode, and you see that the light comes on flashing once per second. That means it's acquiring a GPS signal. When it only flashes once every 15 seconds, that means it has a GPS fix. Let's start the car and uh, check the valve operation. All right, I'll open the valves and we should hear a difference. 
no difference. If you hear anything, it's just the variances in the engine idle. But right now, the track nanny is in the loud mode, so the valves are already open. But let's turn it to stock. In stock mode, the exhaust button definitely opens and closes the valves. All right, looks like everything works. Let's put away all this cables and put our car back together. Just using the twist ties that came with the products, wrapping up the cable and tucking it behind the carpet. Same thing with the power cable. Just gonna tuck it up back in there. You know, you wanna make sure it doesn't rattle or something. It should be tight behind the carpet. As you can see, I'm planning to put my track nanny in this area, but you don't have to put it there. You can route the wires over to the right and send it into the passenger storage compartment behind the passenger seat. Or if you want, you can move it all the way to the front where it's accessible in the cabin by taking more trim and carpet away and routing it all the way up to say that net in the passenger footwell. It's up to you. All right, time to put everything back together and that means getting this engine cover back into place. And I can't stress enough how to be careful with those sharp metal edges. I'm gonna put all those T30 torque screws back in. Note how I have the wiring harness exiting out the engine bay over to the track nanny. As I pointed out earlier, for the 981, you probably wanna run it out the right side. Don't forget those two screws that are hard to get to. And then we'll put the carpet in. The carpet just tucks under the, each of the four tie down rings as well as under the plastic trim on the left and right side. Once that's all in place, we're gonna reinstall that crossbar. So we'll start with the plastic trim for the crossbar. It just snaps in with its metal clips. Just tap it down with the palm of your hand. And then we need to get the metal or aluminum crossbar here. And I want you to note there is this hole it's an offset from the center and that goes towards the driver's side there. You see that pin? So you use that to know which direction this goes. Line it up and then put those T30 torque screws back in. I started with my fingers and then tightened them down with my DeWalt. That 90 degree driver came in handy. Then we'll snap back in the seat belt trim. This was a little more difficult than some of the other trim pieces to get lined up. On this one, I had to pull it off and put it back on a couple times. And then uh, we'll do this section here. Again, there's nine clips just Tap it down firmly on all areas until you feel it's seated properly. You can put your covers on now, but uh, actually it's easier to put the other plastic trim on uh, without those covers on. These side pieces take a little bit of work. You just wanna make sure they're fully aligned and then tap them into place. And of course, get that weather stripping back over the top of them. If they're solid, they're not gonna rattle or anything, and then you can move on to the other one. And once you feel both of them are fully seated and tucked under the weather stripping, we just need to put in our last two carpeted pieces. This one here is where the track nanny is, and you have a couple options. You can put the panel back and then maybe mount the track nanny here with some Velcro. That's one way to do it, easy access, but I don't like seeing it, honestly, so I'm just gonna tuck my track nanny behind it. And if I need to get to it, no problem. That panel comes off real easy. And we'll complete the job with the last panel. All right, that's it for installing the track nanny. Now, I wanna say one thing. I'm not a pro, I'm not an expert, and thanks to you and the forums and other YouTube videos out there, it helped me with a couple of hard spots for me to figure out, like just identifying which for sure was the exhaust control uh, connector. Thank you for that, but I hope that I brought you a video that uh, you found really helpful in getting this done and it made you feel confident that you can knock it out. Now, it took me hours to do this, so I hope you appreciate that, but uh, let me know how long it took you in the comments to do this yourself after watching my video. I'm gonna guess about an hour tops, maybe with a 15 minute beer break. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it's really not that bad, especially when you got someone showing you how it's done. Now in a couple days, I'm going to Laguna Seca to test out the track nanny. Hopefully I don't get any black flags. If you wanna see that video, be sure to check it out. It should be right here for you. Otherwise, please hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, hit the bell to be notified of future Porsche content. Thank you so much for watching the Jet Fuel Only channel. We'll see you next time.